Welcome to Mariner Spotlight, the top 10 defensive plays. I'm Angie Menting. On this show, we're going to count down some of the top moments in Mariner's history as defined by you, the viewers. And today, we have got a little love for the glove. It's a showcase of some of the greatest throws and catches in Mariner's history from some of the franchise's biggest stars and a few surprises thrown in as well. So without further ado, let's begin the countdown. And we start off at number 10, Little O's Big Play. You know, I remember throwing that little one-fingered fastball and him, you know, hitting it out front over the top of me. And the only thing I remember saying, really looking up, going just, hey, hey, Grandpa, you got that one? And, uh, you know, I turn around and I see Omar's hat come flying off. And I see that big bare hand of his grab that thing and, and throw it over the first base. And, and you know, lo and behold, you know, the place erupted guys coming out on the field and you know it was, it was something special and Ernest Lyle stands between Chris Basio and an unbelievable game tonight his 2-1 pitch on the way swung on high jumper with the mound charged by this kill barehead throws it's over and Basio has done it my oh my the second no hitter in Mariner history Great defense, great pitching. You know, it was a, a high chopper over the mound that uh, people said that I could catch it with the glove, but you know, uh, my bare hand uh, came in and, and made the play at first base, and uh, something that people rem remembers, uh, and, and I could never forget because uh, actually that is the only uh, no hitter that I've been part of. It's one of the greatest days on, on my career. Our countdown continues with number nine, Area 51. By the time 2005 arrived, Ichiro's defensive prowess was well known across the league. But every once in a while, he turned in a play that still made you say, wow. That was the case on one early May game against the Angels. Well hit right field. Ichiro going back to the one. He tracked to the wall, leaps up, and he makes the catch. Holy smokes, Ichiro climbing the wall in right field. Over the top of the fence, and he brings it back. Ichiro puts a foot on the wall, jumps high in the air, and he drops Garrett Anderson of the home run. Holy smokes, what a catch. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen a, a better catch. That's uh, it's incredible. I know, uh, I mean, you can tell. He practices that. What did you see from your vantage point? Well, when I was in second base, I, and I see him going back and back and back, and then when he start going in the in the fence like Spider-Man, I went back because I'm like, he, he's gonna do some crazy Japanese stuff, and he did. I mean, it was unbelievable. So it was good that I caught it because if I had missed it, it might have become known as a big-time blooper play, such as after climbing the fence, the ball hits me in the head and it becomes a home run. But at the time, I had clearly imagined the play and made the catch. My most memorable catch. I have a feeling we might be seeing Ichiro again on this countdown. Still ahead on Mariner's Spotlight, the top 10 defensive plays will bring you the rest of the top 10. Which play will claim the top spot? Well, you'll have to stick around to find out. Welcome back to Mariner's Spotlight, the top 10 defensive plays in Mariner's history. Now, so far, we've made it through the top two plays on our countdown with Omar Vizquel and Ichiro Suzuki stealing the show. So what's next? Let's get right to it. Now time for play number eight. Cammy robs the captain. When Ken Griffey Jr. was traded away, we thought who in the world could possibly fill the shoes of Ken Griffey Jr., who was gonna be a Hall of Fame player? Well, we found out that Mike Cameron can do that out there in center field. I never had, I didn't have no fear around the wall. I just, I try to play with the wall as like I belong on the wall. Fly ball into deep center field. Cameron back to the one inch track, to the wall, makes the catch! Look at the ovation. The fans are still on their feet. I really think 
that uh, the fans fell in love with Mike Cameron from that play. To watch him run out there and make that catch up against the fans in front of the Mariner fans, I think everybody just kind of like, wow, this guy can really play. And that's the way it made me feel. And, you know, from that point on, I just, I kind of took off from there. And it was um, just kind of a blessing in disguise that I got a chance to do it um, in such a great place. Number seven, fly away. Nope, he got it. Raul Ibanez has long been a fan favorite around the Pacific Northwest. Typically, that was because of his bat. But on July 1st, 2006, the Mariners left fielder wowed the crowd with the leather. Jamie Carroll, a fly ball to left field, fairly deep. Ibanez going back to the track. The wall, fly away. Oh, he got it. He went over and got it. My, oh my, what a catch by Ibanez. And Jamie Carroll is denied his fourth home run of the year. Banyas goes one foot on the wall, leaps up, he catches it going away with not his back to the wall. And that's a spectacular catch by Ryle Bond. You better believe it. That ball was gone. I didn't think it was going to go, uh, you know, that far. Um, you know, he puts a, put a good swing on it and, uh, you know, it was over the fence. So, um, you know, at that point I was just climbing the wall trying to get my glove over there and, and uh, trying to time it right. Um, Wow, I mean, uh, Raul just, you know, I think that for him, the, the, the timing of it, uh, almost in the pier as though he was even seeing it at the end, just kind of threw his glove up there to make that kind of a play right there. Uh, you know, jumping into the wall, not seeing it really great. I mean, it was it was an unbelievable catch, and, and uh, you know, Raul did, he, he did some unbelievable things with the bat, no question, but that's an unbelievable thing with the glove right there. Moving on to number six, something out of Star Wars. With that throw, you know, it, uh, it marked the arrival of one of the greatest players in the history of this franchise and in Major League Baseball, Ichiro. Here comes a 3-2 pitch on the way. Swung on and a ground ball punched into right field for a base hit. So heading to third base is long the throw to third base. And they've got him nailed at third base on a tremendous throw by Ichiro. I'm here to tell you that Ichiro threw something out of Star Wars down there at third base. To be honest, it was very cold in Oakland on that day. And I didn't want the ball to come to right field because my arm was not warmed up yet. Just as I was thinking, the ball don't come my way, suddenly the ball came towards me. So I thought, come on, man. And I was a little mad at the pitcher. But because the ball came my way, I had to make the play. And I just threw it as hard as I could, and it ended up being that play. When he let it go, I was like, oh, he's probably not going to get him. Oh, he's going to go. Oh, my God, he's dead. <laughs> so you can see the ball just catching him, passing him, and he had no chance, no shot. It was just a jaw dropper because that was a laser that started at five feet and got to about three feet covering 200 feet. It was so startling, I couldn't believe it. And neither could Terrence Long. And Terrence Long was D-O-A. Now narrowing the top plays in Mariners history down to just 10 is no easy task. Now fortunately, we made you, the viewers, do the dirty work. But some truly outstanding plays just missed the cut, and they deserve some attention as well. So here are a few plays that just barely hit the cutting room floor. Wilson slides and he makes the catch. A collision is how this one ends. Gibson dives and he makes the catch. Holy smokes, what a play. With Reynolds, Reynolds a sliding catch. Running on a rope, leaps up and he makes the catch and takes a backward clip into the front row. Hattinger makes the catch. There are some amazing memories in those plays. And the fact that they didn't make the top 10 shows you just how good these plays are. We've got the other half of the countdown when Mariner Spotlight continues. Welcome back to Mariner Spotlight as we count down the top 10 defensive plays in Mariner's history as voted on by you, the fans. Now, so far, we've seen Omar Vizquel's no-hitter saving barehanded snag, each row climb the wall at number nine, Mike Cameron had his welcome to Seattle moment at number eight, 
At seven, Raul Abanez shows he's not just a pretty bat. And at six, Ichiro threw something out of Star Wars. Our top 10 countdown continues with number five, Stands the Man. It's no surprise to see names like Ichiro and Mike Cameron on this list of great defensive plays in team history. But some of the best moments have come from some of the lesser known names. And in June of 2000, that was certainly the case. Stan Javier played a critical role in the Mariners' playoff season to start the new millennium thanks to his bat and plays like this one. Here's the next pitch on the way. Swing and a fly ball into deep right field. Back on the ball, Stan Javier to the one track. Leaps up and it's off the top of the wall. Does he get it? He makes the catch. Holy moly, off his glove. The ball went up in the air. Javier came down to the one track and the ball lands in his glove. An incredible catch by Stan Javier. For Javier, it was a little difficult because uh, he was, I think we we're about the same age actually, so uh, seeing him do that, when he got in the dugout, he was like, just another catch. It was like, really, just another catch. Watching him make that play, it was like, man, this guy can still get it done. Checking in at number four on the countdown, 200 can wait. The Jesse Barfield catch last year, where you robbed him of his 200th home run. <laughs> I, uh, Jesse's one of my good friends, and uh, when I caught it, you know, he was, I was laughing because um, Hackman um, missed one in spring training, and I got all over him, so he, he said something to me after I caught it. And Actually, the first time that I had a chance to see Junior, I was in the big leagues with the Yankees. Um, Jesse Barfield was a teammate of mine, and he hit it pretty good. And again, it was one of those things where I didn't know what to expect because I knew that Junior had all this talent. Everybody was talking about him being a great player, but he was just getting started. Slider swung on and a high fly ball hit into deep left center field. Back goes Griffey. He's back to the wall. Makes the leap, and does he make the catch? He does! going back to the 1A track, leaps high in the air, and he's got it! An incredible catch by the kid! He takes away a home run from Jesse Barfield, climbing the wall in left center field. Look at Barfield, he's stunned, he's standing there with his hands on his hip. That's the first time I saw him, I went, yeah, he, he's, he's different than anybody else. What made that catch so tough was that Junior had to run into left center field with a full head of steam, leap onto the wall, go over the fence, and make the catch and rob Barfield of a home run. It was just one of the greatest catches that uh, we've ever seen. I didn't want to run into a wall, and that was my biggest thing, is if I don't get it, I can at least get to the wall safely and not run into it because I'm running full speed. <laughs> I don't believe it! It's about time we see the kid on the list, but I have a feeling it won't be the last time he makes this show. Still ahead, it's our final three plays as we count down the top 10 defensive plays in Mariners history. Welcome back to Mariners Spotlight, the top 10 defensive plays in franchise history. Now, so far, we've made it through seven of the plays on the countdown, and we've seen some gems from Omar Vizquel's no-hitter saving barehanded snag to the kid robbing Jesse Barfield of home run number 200. But we still have three spots to go. So, let's get after it. Now it's time for play number three, Spider-Man. I know I put him on the highlight reel quite a bit in games that I was pitching. Uh, here in the Kingdom, where he made the uh, catch out in center field, where he ended up kind of looking like Spider-Man on the wall, where his glove uh, and his hand were kind of embedded in the padding, and his feet, his spikes were in the padding, and he could do everything uh, at that time better than anybody else. Pitch to him, swung on and a fly ball hit deep into the gap in right center field, the kid on his horse, back to the warning track. The wall makes the leap and makes an unbelievable catch! Ken Griffey on the run at the wall, he leaps and makes a spectacular catch. Crashing into the wall at the 380 mark to take extra bases away from Ruben Sierra and in the Ranger fifth inning. If there was a fly ball, he was going to go out and get it, no matter where it was. 
and the three two pitch on the way swing and it's a fly ball right center field and deep on the run Diaz and Griffey Griffey up against the wall jumps up and he makes the catch he crashes into the fence Griffey leaped right into the wall at the 380 mark and he made the catch and fell to the warning track Griffey just stayed on the warning track and he hurt himself I mean his wrist was shattered it was in pieces um, but you would never have known it. Um, he was just so locked in, so focused on making the play. And Griffin Jr. leaps. Does he have it? Yes, he does. An incredible catch. Holy mackerel. Even Johnson is dumbfounded. You got to be careful. And he said, look, I only know how to play uh, baseball one way. And, and, and uh, that's to, to be as good as I can on every play. And you saw Jr. Uh, in center field and you see the things that Junior did and it was unbelievable. For play number two, we head to Boston and find the Boneyard. High fly ball by Hatterberg headed for the bullpen and it's in to the bullpen. So is Jay Buner, but does he have the baseball? Buner! Just so happened that either that day before the game or the day before, Jay Buhner asked one of the umpires, hey, what would happen if I go back to the wall and I catch the ball and I fall over the bullpen, can I toss the ball over to Junior or do I have to bring the ball back? And the umpire told him either that day or the day before, he said, you have to bring the ball back. If you toss the ball back to Junior, it's a home run. You have to show possession and you have to bring it back. Jay was the type of outfielder that um, he would throw his body into anything, and, and he would throw it into a wall. He'd clearly throw it over a wall to catch a ball, and um, that's one of the, I mean, it's one of the greatest memories I have of, of seeing him play out there in the outfield. Now, the bone could get it done with the bat, but he was fun to watch in right field, too. Before we get to our number one play on the countdown, let's relive a few more plays that just barely didn't make the cut. Randall coming in, blows and fouls. Oh, wow! And Kyle Seeger, a game-saving play. He's to the wall, leaps up and makes the grab! Hot ground ball, right to Mark, he is tough. Triple play time. Reynolds to O'Brien! Which play earns the top spot in our countdown of the top 10 plays in Mariners history? I'll give you one guess who turned it in. We've got the ultimate reveal next on Mariners Spotlight. Welcome back to Mariners Spotlight, the top 10 defensive plays in Mariners history. Our countdown so far has taken us through the ages of both Mariners legends and invaluable role players, from Little O to Stan Javier. From Mike Cameron to Raul Ibanez, and from Ichiro to Jay Buter. We witnessed poetry in motion from the Mariners defenders over the past four decades. And that takes us down to our top play. Number one on our list, the best play I ever made. Luis Gonzalez had a fly ball deep to right center field and just missed the overhang and was heading into the lower deck at right field. Nobody could get to that ball except Ken Griffey Jr. Hunter with 28 stolen bases. High fly ball, well tagged this time, and Junior going back to the track. The wall makes the leap and makes the catch. Amazing catch by Junior as he takes a home run away from Luis Gonzalez. My, oh my! Perfect timing, and Junior receiving a standing ovation here. Griffey going back to the track. He leaps. When Griffey came up, the first thing a lot of us thought of was Willie Mays, because Willie Mays had that uh, joie de vivre when he played the game. He played it with joy, he played it with passion, but he also looked like he was having the time of his life every 
game he played. And that's the way Griffey was. He was like uh, uh, Michael Jordan in baseball. That guy was unbelievable, you know, the catch that he made. I remember almost falling off the house watching that play. Again, you know, we, got, we get spoiled because he did it so often where he made great catches. But, but that one to be completely exposed, to reach out as far as you can, um, unbelievable play. The kid certainly had a habit of making us say wow, and it's no surprise to see him featured prominently on this show. Well, we hope you enjoyed this edition of Mariner's Spotlight. We'll see you next time. Until then, I'm Angie Menting. Goodbye, and thanks so much for watching.